Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we are doing an overview of the entire season of Power Rangers Zio and talking about what worked, what didn't, and what could have been done differently. First and foremost, if you haven't watched any of these episodes before, there are 50 videos before this one going into minute detail about how each individual episode making up this season went. They're all linked in the playlist above. We begin this season with exactly where we left off from season 3. The command center has been completely destroyed and Tanya has replaced Aisha. They believe that Goldar and Rito have escaped with the Zeo Crystal. However, the rangers find the Zeo Crystal buried nearby and it shoots out lasers sticking their feet to the ground which sinks them down into the underground tunnels of the command center. A new evil force has also arrived, the Machina Empire. They are the royal house of gadgetry, led by King Mondo and his wife Queen Machina. They have a son named Sprocket and there's a chief advisor Clank who has a small friend named Orbis. They are planning to attack Earth, but first they start with the moon, scaring Rita and company out of there. They also realize that Goldar and Rito must have failed to get the Zeo Crystal, so they reach out to Master Vile who will let them stay with him. Speaking of Goldar and Rito, they're actually on Earth and they've lost their memories. They find Bulk and Skull and they act as assistants to the two, essentially for a very long time. More on that later. The Rangers find out about the Machine Empire after they find Alpha and Zoran who are fine, and they must now harness the power of the Zeo Crystal for new powers. This leads to Tanya saying that she'll step down since everyone else has been there longer, but Billy gives her the Yellow Crystal. They are now the Power Rangers Zeo. Catherine is a Zeo Ranger 1 pink, Tanya is Zeo Ranger 2 yellow, Rocky is Zeo Ranger 3 blue, Adam is Zeo Ranger 4 green, and Tommy is Zeo Ranger 5 red. They are successful in their first battle against the Machine Empire, and Billy will now act as a tech advisor from the base of operations, the Power Chamber. Then they get their new Zords, which are two cannon-like machines, a Sphinx, a Taurus, and a Phoenix, which combine to the Zeo Megazord. They can also swap out the heads for different battle helmets, which give the Megazord allegedly new abilities with each other, but really, it's just different ways to ram or fire lasers at something. After a long string of what I would call filler episodes where we learn that the writers aren't afraid to try weird ass things, Billy finds out that he's actually graduated from high school early due to a computer error. This actually links up with Cestro, the blue alien ranger, coming back to Earth to ask for help from Billy because there's a monster on Aquatar that's ruining the entire planet's water supply. Billy can't do much from Earth though, so he's going to Aquatar with Cestro to help him. The rangers actually miss him as he leaves, and they lament that they didn't get to say goodbye to Billy, even if it's just temporary. After a few more episodes, Billy comes back to Earth, but the Machine Empire tries to kill him by sending him into the freaking sun. Luckily the rangers save him, and Billy is safe back on Earth with them. Then a very widely known about three-parter occurs, where we learn that Kimberly has actually found someone new in Florida while training for the Pan Global Games, and she breaks up with Tommy via a letter. Tommy's heartbroken, so they go to a ski resort to help Tommy clear his head, but they keep getting pulled away by the Machine Empire. Also, there's some pro athlete there who was super into Tommy, and it's awkward because he's definitely supposed to still be in high school. This ends up really shining a light on the fact that Kat actually has a crush on Tommy, and the two end up flirting a bit with each other. Immediately after this, Tommy starts having visions about the half of the arrowhead that he got at the end of Season 3, and he meets someone named Sam Trueheart. Sam puts Tommy on a vision quest to follow a falcon, and he ends up finding someone else who has the other half of the arrowhead, David Trueheart. He is Tommy's brother, and they were both adopted into separate families. Ironically, Tommy promises to never lose contact with David ever again, and then David is swiftly removed from the show. <laughs> During this period, they introduce the Red Battle Zord, a Zord that only Tommy can control. Also, his mind has to be clear while doing so. It's actually just based on technology that Billy has brought back from Aquatar. After a few more filler episodes, a new mysterious Gold Ranger has appeared in front of them, and he's seeking to help the Rangers. He is a giant Zord called Pyramidus. However, they have no idea who he is. The biggest theory is Billy, but it's not. Then we're led to believe that it could be Skull, David, or even their friend named Raymond who is around momentarily. I should also say that Stone is fired from the police force due to Vulcan Skull's incompetence, but Stone ends up just starting up a detective agency of his very own, which Vulcan Skull joined him in. After what feels like a thousand filler episodes, we find out that the Gold Ranger is actually an alien named Trey from the planet of Triforia, and he has crash landed in his Pyramidus on Aquatar, putting it out of commission for the time being. He splits into three different personalities, and they need to transfer his powers to another person. This is simply for the Gold Ranger powers to continue to exist. They try with Billy, but he can't take the powers because of those random sparks he took in the face in the finale of Season 3, I guess. Tommy has an idea of who to get. Tommy gets his friend back to the command center, and dun dun dun, it's Jason, the original Red Ranger. He takes on the powers of the Gold Ranger, joining the team. Also, the three trays just give them the Super Zeo gems to help out the Rangers, introducing us to the Super Zeo Zords, which come together to form the Super Zeo Megazord. Also, Goldar and Rito finally remember who they are, and they rejoin Rita and Zed, who are now on the moon with Finster, and I guess Babu and Squat died, I don't know, driving around in an RV. What happened with their arrangement with Master Vile? Lily, no one knows. 
Then King Mondo gets the Damocles sword to destroy the Power Rangers, but they stop him, and Mondo has been completely destroyed by them. His son Sprocket and his wife Machina talk about how they will just have to rebuild him. Then a new villain, Louis Kaboom, arrives in the Machine Empire, and he was actually made by Rita and Zed to infiltrate the Machine Empire and help them get their revenge on Mondo and Machina. However, he breaks ties with them and he becomes the main villain for a while. Also, Ernie has started a beach club for the youth center. Okay. And there's a girl named Emily who was once in a lame biker gang who is now flirting hardcore with Jason, but like, look at him. Could you blame her? So in the middle of some filler episode about a weasel monster, the Rangers get a new Zord. The Warrior Wheel, which is being used in lieu of them not having access to Pyramidus while it's still being repaired. Then, Tanya gets a letter from Aisha explaining that basically, here's a map to where your parents were lost on Mysterio Island and also a key. She finds her parents, but she also finds a lost Tiki of Auric with them, who the villains try to use against the Rangers, but surprise, it fails. Auric the Conqueror is now an ally of the Power Rangers, and he's only around like five times maybe. Then Louis Kaboom is destroyed in an episode about practical jokes, and we meet Sprocket's older brother Gasket and his wife Archerina. After Kaboom is taken care of, Gasket and Archerina vow to take over the Machine Empire together. There's a bit more filler here, including episodes about Tommy getting brainwashed again before they discover that Billy has begun to age rapidly. Turns out what he did to make himself a normal age again when the Alien Rangers were around wasn't a great idea, and now he's getting super old and terrible at acting. The Alien Rangers come and give him water from their Eternal Falls, and it works a little bit, but he needs long-term treatment on the planet of Aquatar. Billy must leave, and he falls in love with an alien named Sestria. Also, the Alien Rangers join the Zero Rangers in battle against two monsters, both of which representing Rita and Zed in the Machine Empire appropriately. Then, in an episode about a singing spell on Tommy and Tanya, Mondo just shows up again, totally fine. Great storytelling here, everyone. He kicks out Gaskin Archerina, and he returns to claim the throne. We end the season with Jason starting to lose the Gold Ranger powers due to his human body not being able to keep up with them, and Rita and Zed and crew fight the Machine Empire to gain control of them instead. However, they just end up going back to Trey, who reunites into a single person again. Then the Rangers grow giant, defeating the Machine Empire. Also, Bulk and Skull get an offer to move to France to be detectives there, and they leave Stone, who is mad about them leaving. In the end, Rita and Zed give the Machine Empire a bomb as a present, killing them, and they claim that they are back now. Also, Jason is dating Emily, and Kat and Tommy are holding hands, and it's anyway that they're now dating too after they just had their first date an episode before. The end. So a lot happened here, so I'll just start with what worked. Honestly, I love the characterization of this season between the villains and the heroes. Each ranger was pretty distinct from one another. I mean, Tommy's his generic brave leader. Jason's the new old guy coming back into his own. Rocky is a goofball. Adam is still a sensitive type. Tanya is a firecracker of a character who I think is extremely important to this show. And Kat likes Tommy. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else going on for Kat, but hey, like five out of six ain't bad. Also, the dynamic between Rita and Zed and them being on the moon trying to sabotage the Machine Empire is amazing. Also, the Machine Empire's family unit is so intricate and even like close-knit, so when Louis Kaboom shows up, it really ruffles some feathers. I also love seeing the sibling rivalry between Sprocket and Gasket. Just great writing all around for most of these characters. My number one complaint about this season is Catherine because she literally can't do anything to save herself. She's in trouble at all in Zio. She starts screaming for Tommy or Jason to come help her. I actually don't really mind that they pushed a Tommy Cat relationship as much as I thought I would in this viewing because the two actors actually kind of make it work. But I wish she had something else going on besides the fact that she had a crush on Tommy and that apparently she teaches dance now. I mean, I, I can't tell you what they could have added to make her better, but I don't know, just something. Also, my God, they really dragged out the Gold Ranger arc for no reason. It takes us 10 episodes to figure out that he's not even someone we've ever met before, and we have no chance in guessing who it is. Also, they really try to foreshadow that it's Billy or someone that the Rangers know when it's just not. They also just drop random plot lines with him, like how he can't tell the Rangers who he really is or else he'll lose his powers. I mean, that was just a dumb line, but like overall. I actually don't mind seeing Billy being in the power chamber more often, and while I wouldn't have minded if he had stayed a Ranger, I think it was a good natural progression for Billy as a character. It's a shame we got the terrible send-off, but that was a lot of outside circumstances, which I explained when I covered that episode. Overall, I would say Zeo is kind of brave in a way, because it was trying everything. It tried to make the show feel fresh and new, and honestly, in moments, they really succeeded. Sometimes they failed with some of the things that they did, but overall, you can tell that they really tried to make this the best season possible with the circumstances that they had. They told stories they didn't have to, like Tommy and Kim breaking up, or even Jason coming back into the fold at all. Hell, most of the Rita and Zed vs. the Machina Empire stuff was entirely plot driven, having nothing to do with the Japanese footage. So Zeo gets an A for effort, even if it falters more often than not when it tries to stick the landing. So what did you think of Zeo as a whole? 
let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button as well as subscribe for the new Ranger reviews here every single Tuesday and Thursday. Also, there's some random extracurricular videos about the show sprinkled throughout. Next time, we'll be talking about the prequel to the next season of Power Rangers. That's right, it's the second film in the Power Rangers franchise, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Get ready to potentially cringe for a very long time. But until then, may the power protect you.